Turn now to question seven, honourable member for Douglas East, Mrs. Barber. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask the Minister for Policy and Reform, pursuant to his answer in October Timwall, whether telecoms developments undertaken to date under the Town and Country Planning Development Order 2019 are proportionate and balanced, and what his department is doing to ensure permitted telecoms developments are as in keeping with their surroundings as possible. From the Minister for Policy and Reform, Mr Harmer. Thank you, Mr President, and I would like to thank the Honourable Member for her question. I refer back to my written answer of the 20th of October 2020, where I set out that an order has numerous safeguards to ensure development is proportionate, balanced, and with sufficient levels of scrutiny with regards to the built environment. Determining whether works proposed via the prior approval of our normal planning application is the responsibility <coughs> of DEFA. In terms of prior approval, DEFA must only consider the following factors in determining an application. A, the visual, the visual and noise impact on a residential amenity. B, the visual impact of character and the appearance of the area. C, the impact of any designated conservation area. And D, the impact of any designated watercourse. In terms of a normal planning application, DEFA will make its determination in line with section 10 4A to D of the Town and Country Planning Act 1999. May I be helpful in stating that if anyone feels that the works have been undertaken without necessary approvals, they should report them via the request to investigate form and they will be investigated in accordance with the enforcement policy at www.gov.im forward slash planning enforcement. Supplementary, Mrs Barber. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, he mentioned that uh, people should raise concerns relating to developments that have, in fact, been carried out without permissions. Um, could he comment on um, a particular development um, in Woodburn House that we're now waiting over 11 months for feedback on that, and that is still in situ despite it not having those relevant permissions? Thank you, Mr. President. I will have to come back to the member and look in, 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 in investigate that further and come back to where that's up to. Honourable Member, Mr Moorhouse. Thank you, Mr President. <clears throat> There's a growing list of locations where no prior consultation with local residents appears to have happened. Will the Minister try to take action in this area to stop this steamrolling taking place in residential areas? Can he guarantee those affected should be contacted and the specific detailed information provided before the works begin? Minister Thank you, reply. Mr President. Uh, the order has a, a number of safeguards to ensure development is proportionate and balanced and with sufficient levels of scrutiny regarding the built environment. Schedule 1 sets out some general conditions that apply to any development that might be carried out under the order. If they cannot be complied with, then it's not a permitted development. This means nothing is allowed under the order that would create an obstruction to the pavement or highway visibility take place within a curtilage of a re registered, registered building or agent monument or within an area of specific scientific interest or involve the felling and lopping and limbing of, tre limbing of trees. Schedule 2 sets out the works which could be undertaken and as normal permitted development. This is without the involvement and planning subject to compliance with specific conditions and limitations. For example, conservation areas are one such limitation. They are designated by cabinet officers areas where the built environment and its character are particularly vulnerable to development. In areas subject to such an order, development of cabinets or masks cannot take place under the schedule. Schedule 3 sets out the works that have been undertaken subject to a prior approval application. This is an extra safeguard not normally applied to, to permitted development and allows DEFA to consider whether, the, due to a defined set of issues, the proposal should not be allowed as permitted development and, instead of full ap planning application, be required. The fourth schedule sets up the process for dealing with prior approval applications. Developments such as cabinets or masks up to 0.3 metres in diameter with a conservation area or 20 metres of a primary window could potentially take place under the schedule, but is subject to the prior approval process, which requires consideration of visual noise impact or residential amenity and impact on visual impact of the character and appearance of the area. And a key change that was introduced with previous telecommunication 
board is that larger lattice style masks will now always require full panning application and go through the normal process. Obviously, we're looking to um, um, see, see, um, see developments, 4G and so forth. These are obviously important. What I was trying to highlight is there's a, an extensive process that can be taken. Obviously, it's the responsibility of the, those providing those masks to um, to be socially responsible about it, to, to, to use mitigating factors, and obviously there's a process that uh, that, that DEFA go through to to ensure that, um, as far as possible, the requirements of the order are met. Honourable Member, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. President. Leaving aside the merits of telecoms masts, can the minister confirm that the purpose of permit permitted development in planning policy is? to avoid consultation and inquiry and debate. That's the purpose of it, just to put it on the record, a simple answer. Secondly, can the Minister advise whether he can reconsider whether more than one cabinet below a mast can be allowed under the permitted development? Because clearly the law allows it, but I understand one of these masts has got four cabinets underneath it, which would seem to be pushing the limits of um, <coughs> permitted development. And finally, would the, um, would the Minister acknowledge there's an apparent contradiction between planning policy and this permitted development order in telecoms because for instance in the area plan for the east um, essentially the area plan for the east confirms that in douglas and in the rest of the east designed facilities will be designed so as to be able to host equipment from more than one operator with sharing of masts and sharing of ducts and that's contrary to what the enterprise department is encouraging and telecoms companies are doing at the moment Minister to reply. Thank you. Obviously, what I was trying to highlight there, there are many numbers of process, but obviously with a permitted order, there is a, um, the, the whole point is that, uh, that it can, can go forward much more uh, straightforwardly. So obviously, that, that is the case. Uh, what I do say is, and I, and I, I think it's incumbent, and I just want to stress is, is incumbent on all of um, uh, the telecom providers that they do as much as they can to mitigate. Obviously, these are important. Um, a number of uh, residents, a number of people actually want to be able to use all of their mobile devices and so forth. And, uh, and, and, and as we're driven technologically, um, and obviously, um, obviously, this is always kept under 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 review. And if 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 it is the case that, that the permitted order um, needs to be changed in the future, then that's something that can be be looked at. Honourable Member for Douglas Central, Mrs. Corlett. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the mast situated on Woodburn Road is mounted on a trailer, but the trailer is anchored to the ground by steel cables. So, is that a temporary structure, or is it a permanent structure? And how long will it be permitted to stay in the position that it is now? Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. I, as I said, I will look at that. Um, that particular case and come back to, to both members. Uh, I mean, visually, and purely speaking it from my, my own personal point of view, I would say, could they have done better? That's a question mark. But the, 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 the point is generally, we have to be cognizant of the fact that the idea is that we, we do want to, to see more uh, spread of our, of, of our technology on one, le on one level for business and for, for uh, virtual working and all those things we're talking about working from home. So there is, there is, a, it is a difficult balance, but I certainly take um, the spirit of what the member said. And so obviously, um, we'll look in, into that. Honourable Member for Douglas North, Mr Ashford. Thank you, Mr President. Um, and can I start by thanking the Minister for his comments um, about the order being under review, um, potentially in the future. Um, would the Minister agree with me that it's very important that we keep <coughs> all of our orders consistently under review, and particularly when it comes to telecommunications, because was, would the Minister also agree with me with 5G potentially coming online at some future date yet to be decided? It is important that the island has the infrastructure to move forward, not just from a social point of view, but also economically. Um, would I, can I, would the Minister also agree with me, though, that one of the things that is important is that anything that is put up is sympathetic to the area, and therefore, as the constituent member for Douglas North, can I ask, would the Minister be willing to come up to Douglas North to see what has been erected by one particular telecommunications company um, using the order that, to be perfectly frank from my personal point of view, looks like it's about to launch a mission to Mars um, and is not quite sympathetic? 
sympathetic with the area compared to what another telecommunications company has across the road erected where people think that it's just a lamppost without a head. So would the minister agree that it is a balancing act in relation to all of these things, but it's important we get the balance right? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and I would agree that we, we must continually learn and have things under review. And I, I totally agree with the sentiment. And um, bearing in mind, of course, that we must, um, it's important that we do see technological advances and those things are important. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to the, the concept because I'm very mindful that where, a, where, where telecom providers actually um, can make a, a very big difference. I mean, some of it can be as simple as, 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 as the colour of the, the actual device itself. And, and, and I think they need to be mindful of that because then that will mean um, the need then to perhaps to review and tighten certain areas uh, where, where we do where we do need to. So it is it's, it's definitely something that, that, that we'll look at. Honourable Member, Mr Morehouse. Thank you, Mr President. Is it acceptable that residents will remain uninformed until the construction workers put a letter through the door saying that work is about to start? Can this aspect of the process be improved? Minister, to reply. Thank you. It depends on which schedule. I mean, obviously, if it's a prior approval application, there'll be opportunity to, to look at that. I certainly look into whether it can be approved, but it's always important that, that residents uh, are, are keep a, a keep a um, an appraise of those developments that are being 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 being, being uh, looked at. Honourable Member for Onken, Mr. Callister. Thank you, Mr President. It follows on very nicely from my colleagues from Douglas North and from Arbury and Maloo and Castletown. Would the Minister agree with me that permitted development orders are nothing more than a blank cheque for certain businesses? And will he look again at the communication, especially of how they communicate these messages to local residents who have to endure these suddenly unsightly um, things just appearing in their landscape? Um, will he look again at that communication, please? Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. I certainly uh, will look to see around that communication, but I, I do I have to sort of emphasise this is a balance between what we all want in terms of our connectivity and in terms of particularly of a much more technological age and also a balance of, of, of what is um, um, unsightly. I do have the view, per I, have, I have the view that actually they're, 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 they're more could be done and if, if it isn't done, then, then regulation has to, has to follow. Member, Mrs. Barber. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm, I'm glad the Minister's talked about the balance because I think absolutely, uh, on one hand, there's a pressure to increase the uh, ability and function of our telecommunications networks. And on the other hand, there is absolutely a pressure to get it right in terms of looking uh, in keeping with the local uh, community and surroundings. He mentioned in his primary answer around um, consideration of the visual and noise impact on residential amenity and visual impact on the character and appearance of the area. Um, is he aware, though, that only applies to those applications that require pre-approval and does not apply to those that are considered as permitted under this order? Minister. Thank you. Yes, if it's permitted, then then obviously it can it can crack on. But I do I, I, I take the point again, and a number of members have raised is that there is a balance, and I think if 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 um, developers um, are too too sort of a quick to sort of put up a quick mask rather than actually taking the time to um, to think about actually its context, then then obviously that's going to cause issues and and, 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 and would need further further work in that area. Honourable Member, Mr. Robert Shaw. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I think we've got uh, something quite novel here, Mr. President, this morning, in terms of we've we've all been thoroughly entertained with the minister's original answer where he. He took us through the regulations, but th it was what he said at the end of it, Mr. President, which was that the regulations should be complied with as far as possible. That's novel, and I just wonder what the minister actually meant by regulations being pursued as far as possible. This is this is extraordinary. Could he enlighten us all, please? <laughs> no, the regulations have to be complied with completely. Oh. Or, 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 well, thank you. I'm glad I can um, help. Um, what I was trying to do is give a context around actually not just taking the letter of the law, but around the spirit of what those regulations are. Honourable Member, uh, Mr Baker. Mr President, would the uh, 
the Minister agree with me that uh, the telecoms operators who are erecting this paraphernalia within the parameters set by the regulations should be very mindful of their brand image and corporate social responsibilities in, when, when setting the design and the location and their engagement with local residents. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. President. I think the uh, member from uh, Minister of Infrastructure has made a very good point. That is the, exactly the point I was trying to highlight there. It's, uh, it's about, obviously, they have their awareness of social responsibility and their awareness of corporate brand. Final supplementary question, Mrs. Barber. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I note with interest the use of uh, the expression that telecoms providers can just crack on, um, as the Minister put it, and I understand that, uh, as I say, the permitted development order does exist there, um, but to just touch on the case that's in my honourable friend Minister Ashford's constituency, we have a 15 metre high mast with almost a half a metre diameter shroud at the top of it, in glowing in silver as a beacon in the middle of a residential area. So I ask again, does the Minister feel it necessary to revisit the Town and Country Planning Development Order now to ensure that telecoms developments are proportionate and balanced? Thank you. I said I'd review this and, and I will review it. Please like and subscribe to the Isle of Man TV channel. Thank you.